Welcome to Africa Express. We are going to Brockton today. Uh, we are looking at teen and violence. Uh, in the recent times, there's been a lot of um, teenage killing, shootings in Brockton. And today on our show, we have actually a woman, a mother, if I would say, who whose daughter. Uh, was killed here in Brockton. Um, on the show is um, Stephanie Mariusa and um, Carol Elisa Viveras. Um, you are welcome to Africa Express. Thank you. Stephanie, yes. you, uh, it's so good to see you. Good to see you too, thank you. We are talking of teen um, violence, and unfortunately, you happen to be a victim of that. Yes. <clears throat> Your daughter, Chantel, was shot by somebody. Yes. About a year ago or so. Yes. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what happened, from what you heard? Well, she was um, coming home from a baby shower at her family's house, and um, some kids just opened fire upon her and a group of her friends and uh, other partygoers that were leaving at that time. Um, and she was struck two times, one in the side and uh, one in the side of the cheek that entered her brain, and that was the bullet that killed her. Um, her best friend Peter was shot, and her cousin was shot in the hand. So there was two other victims that night too, but they were able to walk away from the scene, but she wasn't able to. She lost her life that night. She died instantly, right there? Um, that's what they say. However, people that were there at the scene said that she didn't die right away. So. We have a couple of different stories on it. Um, as a mother, mm -hmm. it must have been very difficult to get that news. How did you, how did you get the news? How, who, who, who called you? Um, I had just got off the phone with her because we have a lot of communication, me and her. And she was telling me she was leaving to come home and about five minutes later, I got another phone call, and it was her boyfriend telling me that she'd been shot. So um, I live right around the corner from there, so we just raced over there, and um, she was just laying on the ground. At you the just end of the spoke drive to her by. five minutes five minutes before, before that, she was shot. Before she was shot, yeah. And she told me, Mom, I'm coming home. Because she always called me and told me what she was doing when she was coming home, or where she was going, and everything like that. <clears throat> And I usually didn't let her walk anywhere, but this was right around the corner at a family's house. So, you know, it's right down the street from her home. What do you think is really going to happen to your kid? You know, so I let her walk. It was a nice day and she loved to exercise. So, you know, it's just a little walk around the corner to a family's baby shower that she never came home from. So um, that's... She was how old when this happened? 16. She had turned 16 in February. Yeah. She turned 15, 16 in February. Yes. Two months later. Two, two months later, she was shot. She was shot and killed, yeah. Was this a random type of shooting? Or did she know? You think she knew who, what, who this, what, the, the shooter was? Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what she knew. Whatever she did, she wasn't afraid. She continued on her journey to go home. 
Um, so if she seen them, I guess she wasn't afraid of them. And she just kept walking to her house where she said to her mom five minutes before she was going home. So I guess they apparently didn't scare her that much. She continued on to do what she was supposed to do. So I don't know. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I have a lot of her friends and I have good family. I have good support around me. So I'm able to, to deal, to deal with it. Do you have a, or any other children? No, she's my only daughter. Your only child? Yep. Yep. I had her when I was 17 years old. So we kind of grew up together, you know. She's a good girl. I just have to ask, I mean, your only child. Mm -hmm. Got shot five minutes after you just spoke to her. And you're sitting here. Yeah. I, I think it's very remarkable. I don't, I don't know how it happens either. I can't tell you. I wish I did. I'd bottle it up and sell it to people that are as much pain as I am, you know? But it's, you know, I, I lost my daughter, but I have so many people around me that just have good things to say about her and just have all these wonderful stories about her. And I always knew she was a wonderful child. I just didn't, you know, I thought I was just a mom thinking that their kid's so wonderful. <laughs> but when you actually just have people coming up to you telling you how they, how she, affected them yeah. and what a staple she was in their life. It gives you that And one strength. of those supporters is uh, Carol. Carol, who, son, yeah. Carol <laughs> you are a student at Brockton High School? Yes. Uh, how did you meet up with Stephanie? Um, I made the Chantel Memorial Facebook page and I just contacted her a few hours after making it, I asked her if I could make the account <clears throat> on Facebook. And she said it was okay, and she was more than happy to have somebody, you know, being up on something like that to support Shy and always update everything and keep everybody together as a community. And I think a few days later, we went out to eat, had lunch, and ever since then, we've been really close. Did you know Chantel? Yes, at Broughton High. We had gym class together and we had English class together. Let's see. You have been, basically, you two have been in contact since then, since you started the Facebook. Yep. And you also set up a foundation. For, what is the name of the foundation? It's called the Shy Shy Foundation. What do you guys do? We do events and stuff for the community to help spread awareness to stop gang violence or any type of violence in the community. You know, a lot of people think like it's just a mom and a family and a dad and friends that are involved in it. It's not. It's a community that gets hurt when something like this happens. Stephanie, we are going to take a short break and we'll come back. Um, to continue talking to Stephanie. Uh, before the break, we were talking about um, what um, you guys are doing in the community to uh, raise awareness to violence. I'm not sure whether your daughter's death is related to gang violence or not. But um, I do also know that it is difficult to, especially in this city, to talk about violence because of the gang issues. Mm -hmm. And that by even going out there talking about it, you're putting yourself at risk with the, the gangs. How are you managing to do this 
safely. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. You took everything I had from me. That's all I had. <laughs> like, seriously, no? What else could you possibly do to me to hurt me more than that? So, what? I just go out and do what I have to do. My daughter wasn't afraid of them that night, and neither am I. Because until we stop being afraid of these kids with guns, and it is putting lives in danger, and it, it's, it's all that. But if you just sit back and not take a stance against them, more innocent people will die, and you can't have that. Just to be afraid of somebody with a gun, you take the gun away, they're just a regular person, you know what I mean? What honestly could you do to me to hurt me anymore? You know, that's kind of how I see it. And I don't think it really goes really like that. I think that um, these kids, they're just, there's no guidance in their home. They don't even know what they've done. They don't even have the respect or understand the respect of life that I've installed in my daughter to treat other people good, to treat you know people the way you want them to treat you. They don't have these values installed upon them to even comprehend half of what life is really about. You know, so they're just lost souls out there doing crazy things, hurting other people. And it's better to stand up against it and talk about it and get out there and try to do something about it than them go out and take another innocent life. You know what I mean? Just... In your case, did they catch the person who shot your daughter? Technically, no. Tacti Nobody's been charged with the murder as of yet. So in other words, the person that did this is somewhere out there, but they don't know. Yeah. Did anybody identify the person or again, nobody wants to talk? Well, we ran into that. We ran into that um, in the beginning of everything. People not want to snitch. That's a big thing, not snitching. And that kind of blows my mind because there's a, a life that's gone and a productive individual, uh, somebody who had her own business at 16 years old, enrolled in the Massasoit Community College program there, Gateway, um, just got her permit, learning to drive, enjoying life, had a wonderful life, and that's gone, you know. But the kids, you know, they, they did what they could to help out in the investigation, but they came back to that. They're really clamped up. They don't like talking because, I mean, technically, look at it. They're afraid for their life, too. Right, yeah. They, they have to face these kids every single day. I don't. I can drive myself where I have to go. I can do what I have to do. These kids are put in the limelight with them every single day. So they have these issues. So the fact that nobody wants to identify or everybody claimed not to have seen anything, but mm -hmm. yet there was a death, two other people shot, yep. this case is still lingering for almost a year now. Going almost, almost on two years now. Almost two years. Yep. The person has not been caught. But there were people present when this happened. There was plenty and of people present. And their fear is Them they don't want to be called them. snitch, yep. which is understandable. But mm, the main thing is their life. Their life, yeah. And I can understand that and I can respect that. If you choose to live in that fear, then that's your choice. But that's something you have to live with for the rest of your life. You know, knowing that you've seen what happened to Chantal and you know who did it. And to hold that inside you for the rest of your life to be in fear of this person, that's a shame. That's yeah. something, that's a shame. Yeah, but you, you see, they, these are also young people. They are, and absolutely. Again, uh, I don't know how many people that want to put their life at risk. And don't forget, it's not that person just life. It, possibly their family at risk. Understandable. Yes, a crime has been committed. But do you want to put your entire family at risk to say this is who did it so that the next day you'll find the entire family wiped out? So we're talking of some dangerous elements that are running around with guns that have Understandable. no scruples whatsoever. I, I, I think you, I find you, you are in a very difficult situation because uh, as a mother, 
of course you wouldn't want somebody to come and say, I saw what happened. So that you can have some sort of closure to this whole thing. Yeah. This makes it difficult. It does. It's very difficult. I don't push anybody to do anything. I, I want people to feel when they're ready to talk about what happened, that they're ready for themselves. What is the police doing? They're continuously investigating every lead that comes in, every rumor that they hear, whatever it is, um, they work diligently to find who did this to her because they all have teenage kids at home, same age as my daughter. Most of them probably knew my daughter. So they, they, this is something that hit, especially emergency workers. Um, after this has happened, I had a Rockton Fire Department gentleman come to me and break down in tears to me on the street and just tell me that he tried everything to save my daughter's life. And he was actually um, a recovering alcoholic and he had started drinking again because of that. And mm -hmm. that just hurt me so much that this man put, you know, felt that much for my daughter and just to tell me that he tried everything to resuscitate her and to save her life. You know, so this affected a lot of people. And I, sometimes I'm blinded by my own pain, I don't really see. But when I really do look up and I look around me and I look at all the kids, I, this just affected our whole community. We are going to try to take a short break and we will we'll come back to this discussion. Welcome back to Africa Express. We are talking about teens and violence. Again, with us is um, Carol and Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie is the mother of Chantel who was gunned down um, when she went to uh, a shower as she was returning back uh, five minutes away from her home, five minutes from the time she just spoke to her mother, um, somebody just came, gunned her down along with two, uh, two of her friends. Uh, unfortunately, she died right there. Um, Carol, you, you've been doing um, some events in the community to raise awareness. You've done some events already. What are those events that you've done so far? The first event was the one-year memorial walk for Chantel on April 25th, 2010. We and her family, her friends, everybody that really supported us for our first event showed up and we walked from where she was murdered at to her house where she was supposed to go and to the cemetery, which is where she ended up at. And our other event was the Shai Shai Foundation's first annual event in Brockton. It was hosted by Flo from the Bad Girls Club in um, Safari Nightclub, August 14, 2010. And it was to get everybody together and just have that one day of all our family, friends, everybody together and remember her and have support from other people like Flo and just raise money for our future stuff that we want to use the money for. So what are you raising money for, actually? We're raising money for... We have so many things involved. Yeah. <laughs> we have. And also to give, you mentioned to me giving money, some kind of scholarship to kids that didn't finish high school. The Gateway. The Gateway program. Yes, and the Pitbull release program. For a young lady, it's very, that's very remarkable of you that you are involved in all this. Do you, apart from doing fundraising and uh, memorial events. Is there any, do you work also as well as go to school? Um, I don't really have a job like, for say, like Walmart or something like that. But it's a job. <laughs> <laughs> but I am Flo's personal assistant, and I work for her whenever I'm not busy at home. I check her emails and do her bookings and anything that she needs me to do. That's my job. 
you obviously you are under 18 at school do you find that most teenagers don't feel free to move around or say things like in this situation obviously the people that we are at this party are mostly teenagers too and nobody's talking do you find that this is something that is rampant or that you see every time when things happen within the school community i think when stuff happens like this like for chantel like that was like a big tragedy to everybody everybody broke down it hurt mostly the whole school because mostly everybody knew chantel one way or the other someone seen her in the hallway or something everybody knew chantel so it hurt you know all of us and when stuff like that happens we don't want to let it go because we do love that person we still want to carry them always with us and unfortunately because of school rules we can't wear memorial shirts we can't have buttons or anything to carry on that person because of the whole gang violence stuff and even if the person is not involved in gang violence we're not supposed to wear anything of the person who's ever passed away so I think students some students they sometimes they change their whole ways they change their attitudes they I don't know it just scars them and they some people change and some people stay the same are there gangs at the school a lot of gangs there's tons of them they the school just doesn't know that there is but we all know that there's they're all over the place in the school for those of you that are not in gangs how do you manage to coexist with the ones that that are in gangs just ignore everything about them if they start something with you you just ignore it and you keep it moving you do what you got to do in school and don't focus on them because they're the one that's going to end up failing and not you if you just keep on focusing on what you're supposed to do but you you're not fearful of them that if they say something to you you say the wrong way that somebody might be waiting outside the school for you that day well i was raised in a way that i shouldn't be scared of anything or anybody besides you know obviously my mother and my father <laughs> But when I was little, I used to be scared of everything. I used to be bullied a lot all the time. And then I just grew into that whole I shouldn't be scared at all. And I do face them. I don't fight back. And I sometimes I tend to argue with them back. But it doesn't end up to anything big serious. And if it does come to that level, I go to an adult. And I tell them what's going on and everything's resolved. Stephanie. On that day, mm -hmm. if you were to change anything, if you were to set the clock back, is there anything in particular you could have done that day differently? Yeah, you know, you always play it back. The first thing, you wouldn't have let her leave the house. I would have never let her left the house. Um, I would have picked her up like I do every time, no matter where she's at, I went to go pick her up. And um, so, you know, you always look back and come up with a ton of things you could have done differently, you know. But um, that was then, that's just talk, yeah. you know. And so now I just look at the fact I, I could never let her death go in vain. So just one person it took to be taken away and hopefully we can make an impact on so many other people's lives in a positive way through her so she was kind of our gateway to bigger things to try to help other people through her death and to you know let these kids realize that there every action there's a reaction and all the people you affect it's devastating. It's devastating to a family. It's devastating to friends. You don't ever get over it. You know, time doesn't heal a wound like that. It makes it easier so you can cope. 
but it doesn't ever heal. I'm always going to miss my daughter. I'll never see my grandchildren. I'll never just see her smiling face and then feel like her arms around me again. And those are things as a mom, as you know, you cherish just watching your kids grow. You know, I watched her teeth come in. And the last thing I seen was the blood on her teeth in the hospital bed. So I mean, it's things that these people just have to realize that they've destroyed their family once they're caught. Your family's never gonna see you again either. You know, if you have children, they're never gonna see you. And just for that one moment, the question is what would they done differently that night? You know, Shai was just going on about her business, a typical 16-year-old enjoying her night off from work. What would they have done different? Would you have put the gun down and walked away from the situation if you knew you would have killed somebody, you know? So it, it, it's something they have to ask themselves once they get locked up. What would have you done different that night? As a mother, the ones carrying, the ones in, in gang, carrying guns, also they ask people's children. What would you advise those parents? Because again, if there was some kind of parental guidance or parental involvement, your teenage child would not be running around with gun. Absolutely. I, there's something lacking big time in these kids' lives to be able to run around at all hours of the night with a gun in their pocket. And I've known, I know kids. I, I, I work a lot with kids. I've talked to a lot with kids that are in gangs and stuff. And um, their parents have actually found guns in their house. And they don't do anything about it. That's a dangerous weapon that takes people's lives. So, you know, just be more active in your kid's life. Search their rooms if you have any kind of questions. If you see gang signs, you know, drawings, whatever it is, just look around, see what you can find because you don't want your son to be locked up for, for life, for something, or be the person responsible for taking another person's life. So you're saying that parents should be more proactive Absolutely. Uh, because there's so many rights now for kids. Uh, you can't look into the kids' room. You can't open their drawer. You can't do this. And meanwhile, that's where they, they keep these uh, the guns, the knives, all of, all of that in the house. Yeah. And parents feel like their hand is tied. They can't do much. So you're saying that a parent should, if you see any sign of these that your child is withdrawn, doing all kinds of things, that you should be a little bit proactive. Find out what is going on. Find out what they're hiding in their room. Yeah. You know, talk to somebody. You know, it you goes know, to, to the To prevent thing. this type of thing from happening. Absolutely. You know, you hear it all over TV, the life you save could be your own. Right. So it basically boils down to that. I always heard of people being shot and killed in Brockton. But I was like, my daughter's not into that, so I don't have to worry about that. And I felt bad. It really did hit me. And it hurt when I heard other kids getting shot, especially 15-year-olds, 14-year-olds. And then, you know, you never think it happened to your kid because they're not involved in that. They're, they're, they're in school. They're doing good. They're doing this. And then when you get that call that your child's been shot, you know, it kind of makes you step back. If it happened to mine, it can happen to anybody's. So... Just they have to be very aware of what's going on. Your kids, you're here to protect them. You have to do it. Sometimes tough love. If you find a gun, call the cops. You're right. Um, again, Stephanie, thank you so much. Thank you. I really do admire your courage and thank the you. work that you are doing uh, for the memory of your daughter. Um, Carol, thank you so much for being a good teenager, you know, uh, supporting Stephanie uh, to keep the memory of Chantel alive and uh, spreading the word out there against teen violence. Again, thank you so much for being on Africa Express. Thank you for staying with us on this show. And please continue to watch us on this same channel, same time.